did want to show how accurately this flute is tuned. It's really in perfect A440. So I picked this up off eBay. One of the reasons I really wanted this flute was this sound mechanism right here, which I'm going to show in detail. But just give you a quick overview of the flute. It's a two-piece construction. Uh, it's cedar, um, kind of a sapwood down here, heartwood all on top. A lovely knot here that looks like a bird. That really was an attractive thing for me, as well as this. So let's get into this sound mechanism here. So it has a typical block. This this was, uh, I'm sure, a spear claw. The point was knocked off, which is, <coughs> is what it is. It's not a big deal. Still looks okay. Um, anyway, so your sound block's here. In this particular instance, the channel is cut into the block, not into the flute. And then here's the more unique part, uh, where the splitting edge is a combination of the flute body and then this device right here, which, as you can see, is designed as an angle, so I think it completes the wedge, okay? And that's adjustable, so that the tip of this wedge here is what splits the air and sends air into the flute and air out of the flute, okay? So let's look at the mechanism in more detail. Really uh, love this sculptural quality that it has. Um, so the sound hole is pretty typical except this edge here it's hard to see but it's it's very acute it's, it's razor thin okay here uh, they probably just took something and whittled that down real very very acute angle so this edge is very sharp okay and then this little guy um, which reminds me of a Henry Moore sculpture just how it looks love it uh, it comes in and then it's adjustable so you can bring it over that very very sharp edge and so basically that your wedge you see it being created in the flute is a combination of the flute and this which gives you I think the ability to adjust your uh, your um, sound production to make it uh, the most optimum okay one of the disadvantages is because you do have two pieces uh, can get knocked and get off um, when I took it apart the first time, it took me like 30 minutes to get it back right. And then I put some little uh, tick marks with a pencil so I can go in and get it right on every time. I try to do a video of this earlier. Of course, these videos sometimes take multiple takes. Took all this off, put it back on in just a couple minutes. So, um, <clears throat> Still a little awkward, but not the end of the world. And I think if you're... You know, I'd like to make flutes someday, so that's another reason why I wanted to get this, to examine, you know, what's going on here, and uh, is this something that maybe I can try to emulate. So here's the sound block. The windway is cut into the block instead of into the flute, okay? And this is pretty long. Uh, from here to here, that's a pretty long uh, path. But again, you know, you bring in your block, and it's adjustable. And then you bring your um, your wedge in like this, you know, to get the flute adjusted. And uh, so it's pretty neat. <clears throat> I think uh, definitely well worth the the money. I mean, it plays wonderfully. One thing about it, though, it does wet out pretty quickly. Um, but I, you know, that could be the way I play. I play long sessions um, and long notes. But other than that, uh, pretty unique. Let's let's look at another one here, just in, since I have it. This one, by the way, that flute has no name on it. I don't know who made this. This was made by Paul Venable. Again, it plays wonderfully. <clears throat> You know, he's a maker in Colorado. I don't think he makes flutes anymore, but um, uh, he makes a nice flute. This is a solid block, so the windway is cut into the block, okay? Notice how big the sound hole is here, okay? And then um, just the depression right here, very thin depression. Again, it's an acute angle, but I can, I can see a little bit more of a wedge in there than I can on the other flute. 
and then you've got these lovely rails which really is awesome because it, it keeps the fetish in position and if you play outside it keeps wind from blowing underneath it so it's kind of immune to uh, playing outdoors so there's another interesting uh, sound mechanism <clears throat> then here's another eBay all three of these were eBay's um, this one is another mystery maker flute um, by the way, uh, the Venable is a two-piece, um, routed out. This one is a solid bore, and I thought for the longest time this was like yellow cedar, but I think it's just regular roll pine. And uh, it's bored out, with uh, so it's not two pieces. Um, it has a wonderful tone. So I like these depressions here that he made. It's nice for half holing. You can really have a tactile feel here of what's going on. And uh, so it's bored out here and here. And I was looking at it and I'm like, oh my. Um, it plays great, but the sound hole thing, it's fine. It's in the flute. So the block is solid on the bottom. But if you look at this, it's quite huge. There's a ramp that comes up, and then here's your, you know, cutout, um, and then your mechanism. But I, I can't show this, and I can try to show it. But inside here, it's really awful. I mean, it's 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 not finished. So what happened is, um, you know, they just took a drill bit and then drilled in this way and this way, and they missed. And so I've got this big hole in here that's just a drill hole. And then the other wind hole comes out from the side here. But, uh, and I've had to take, you know, I've taken uh, a file in there and cleaned out a bunch of um, wood shavings that were still in there. And uh, it plays great. It's one of my favorites. So it's just, you never know. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that was, that was obviously... An, a technical mistake could have been the reason why this hole is so big here but uh, it doesn't seem to make a difference in playability so there's definitely one more uh, ways to skin a cat than one you know so this is just a, a very small sampling of um, of uh, the kind of sound mechanisms that people are making out there um, and I, I don't even have an example of uh, a nested uh, sound mechanism where there's actually a, 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 either a piece of metal or leather or something that actually raises the block up so that there's no wind way cut into the flute body or the fetish like this. Um, and I think basically the secret though is getting that is to line the, the, the air that's coming out of the slow air chamber to get it perfectly in line with the splitting edge you know so however that however that airway is made either it's on the body of the flute or it's in the fetish or it's suspended with a a spacer the whole point is to get the airflow to line up on this splitting edge here um, anyway that's just some thoughts on flute mechanisms um, I may try to start making these um, you know of course I've made a few um, but I put a couple together from kits and uh, I made one when I was a kid which I made a video on that which is basically a, a piece of bamboo um, so it already had its <clears throat> it was already bored out but I do think it's a rigorous process it, it'll be a rigorous study I'm glad I have several flutes to look at um, and you know this is this is a huge hole here you know as compared to, and I know this is a bigger flute, it's deeper, um, but I've noticed in the flutes that I have that there are all kinds of uh, different sizes of sound holes. You know, this is a much more traditional uh, style that I've seen, um, and it's real minimal, you know. Um, the G and A's uh, are like that. Uh, the bigger flutes definitely. Uh, much bigger um, 
much bigger sound mechanisms to get more airflow. So, comments, questions, concerns, just leave leave me a uh, comment and uh, appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for watching.